now. As so the teams have worked everything out, it looks like they are getting ready to start that up. We do see uh, the team starting their band train here. With team Acme. Team Acme Gaming coming out versus Team Seraph here, it looks like. Bands coming out for this game. We have Aurelia and Ezreal. And then we have Zach and Cassidy as well. I believe T Acme is the blue side for this first game, and Team Zerif is the purple side for this first matchup. If I am correct with that. Blitzcrank being banned out by Acme Gaming here. It looks like they want to get rid of that hook on the board. We have Zach, Cassidy, and Bean coming out from the side of Team Zerif here. It looks like that's what they would like to ban for this first matchup. Looks like Lee Sin is being hovered over as the first pick for this first matchup here. As uh, we'll see if they decide to lock that one in, and then they do. So Lee Sin being the first matchup, pretty ambiguous, vague pick. Could go top lane, mid lane, or in the jungle. We're not sure exactly what they're going to do with that. See Thresh probably going to get locked in here from the side of um, Team Zerif as they do. Obviously, C Thresh is a highly contested pick with that death sentence, with that play, and the control that he can bring to a lane, and his ability to pick people. So. Another highly contested champion being picked up here. And that looks like Graves is going to go along with that. South Ross seems to maybe decide to lock in Graves here to go with that uh, Graves Thresh combo. So they do decide to lock that one in there as Lee Sin is picked up for the other side. Let's see what else uh, Team Acme Gaming decides to bring it up for this match. I have yet to watch a match on Team Acme Gaming, so I'm not sure exactly. Their potential. I did watch Team Zerif the other day, though, who won both, both of their games in demanding fashion. So we'll see how well this goes. Looks like Janna being shown here is the support potentially. Not sure if I'm uh, gonna lock that in at this point, though. Woo. And our uh, connecting as well. So it looks like in the bottom lane matchup here, we might have a Graves and a Thresh. A lot of burst coming out from that lane. Potentially a lot of damage. They get 2v1 with that as well. Janna being shown from this other side for the counter initiate, counter engage. Uh, if Thresh does grab Janna, though, Janna it can get blown up very easily, in my opinion, pre 6. So she's going to have to play really passive, really careful, first early levels there. And we'll see how that well it works out for them. We do see um, Renekton being picked up as well for the top lane, probably here. And so that means Lee Sin is probably going to be in the jungle, and Renekton will be in the top lane for this matchup. Renekton's a really strong top lane here. And uh, Lee Sin is really good in the jungle, really aggressive in the jungle. We could probably expect a lot of invades from him, a lot of 1v1s in the jungles between the junglers happening uh, because of that Lee Sin pickup. So we'll see what uh, Team Zerif decides to match with that. We see Jarvan being shown as well as Elise. So we'll see uh, if they decide to pick up one of those to combat that Lee Sin in the jungle there. It looks like he's hovering over Jarvan and might want to lock that one in. Jarvan is really strong. Does have quite a bit of, you know, early gank pressure, lots of gank pressure at all. Um, Nocturne is here as well. Nocturne obviously does have a lot of gank pressure as well. And uh, has a better chance of a 1v1 in the jungle versus Lee Sin than Jarvan does. Looks like Ari being shown here by Asian Bliss for the mist lane. She actually did play that the other day. So it looks like Ari is going to be popped into the mid lane here. Four teams there on the purple side. Looks like Draven being shown here for the side of Team Acne Gaming. So that would be a Draven and Janna lane. Obviously with that shield coming out there, Eye of the Storm, quite a bit of damage could come out from Draven potentially in the bottom lane. They do have to be really careful though of Graves and Thresh is, uh, you know, one Thresh Q onto Janna could really make a difference in that lane or a Thresh Q with that death sentence coming out onto Draven would really make a huge difference happen in that lane. Jungler, we're probably looking at a Lee Sin versus Nocturne matchup. Should be okay. We'll see how it goes on. We'll see how aggressive Lee Sin is early on. Uh, I would I would imagine that Lee Sin would play really aggressive early on, and we'll see him abusing his power along the map quite a bit. We do, however, see a Fiddlesticks being shown up by the side of Team Acme Gaming here. 
So that could potentially be a Fiddlesticks jungle, and Lee Sin could be then in the mid lane while Renekton's in the top lane. However, they do change that to Diana, so I'm assuming that we can expect Lee Sin's going to be in the jungle while Renekton's in the top. And uh, Draven's going to get locked into that matchup uh, with uh, Janna there. We do see Shen getting insta-locked here, as uh, it looks like Team Zeref has a lot of holding that one out to the end there. So it'll probably be a Renekton versus Shen matchup, unless... They decided to be one here, and then we have Ari versus Diana in the mid lane. Diana does fairly well in that matchup, surprisingly. And um, then Jungle, Nocturne, Lee Sin, bottom lane, Draven, and Janna versus Thresh and Graves. So we see a lot of mobility coming out from the side of Acme Gaming here. They have the Lee Sin, they have the Janna with their passive coming in, they have Diana as well. So I would imagine that Lee and Diana are going to be dashing around quite a bit. You also have Renekton who has his slice and dice. So Renekton's going to be able to get in and out of, you know, fights pretty easily. So we'll see how well that they do with that. Uh, then we also have, on the other side, though, there's a little bit of dashes as well. As Ari's going to be able to get around with that Spirit Rush. Shen's going to be able to um, stand united into fights as well as Graves with his dash. So I feel like this is going to be a game of people getting caught out of position. You have that death sentence coming in with Bowser's X. See if he's going to be able to catch anybody out. On the other side, you do have Renekton and Lee Sin. If they're able to catch somebody out and ult them away, if Lee's able to kick them back to his team or not. So I feel like this is going to be a huge game of getting out of position. I feel like um, Team Zeref has a little bit of a stronger team comp, in my opinion. Because they do have that Shen who can split push. So I, I really would imagine Shen split push could really help them later in the game, as they do have Nocturne to go with that as well. As well as the Ari and the Thresh and the Grave. So a lot of damage coming out from both sides here, though. Is, uh, there's a Draven and a Diana on the other side as well. So it'll be really interesting to see how uh, well this game goes. Um, it'll be interesting to see also if the teams decide any early shenanigans for this game. Uh, so maybe uh, Jan is going to want to get a couple deep wards in the jungle there. At least in my attempt a red steel or a blue steel. I feel like... Uh, Team Zeref has uh, quite an advantage with that as well as Valsar's X on Thresh can have his death sentence as well as with the charm with Ari and Shen Taunt potentially. So a lot of damage coming out from them while on the other side there's not too much crowd control coming out from the side of Acme Gaming. So that might hurt them a little bit on a little earlier on for the invades and a little bit earlier on late game as well. So we'll see how well that works out for them. Yeah, so we saw the Nocturne-Shen combination work really well for Team Impulsive in the first game of the day. Uh, do you think that Team Zeref has the proper comp to back up that, like uh, Team Impulsive did? I feel like they do, to an extent. If Nocturne gets tanky enough, for sure, um, then they would have the two tanks there. Nocturne can sit in the front line, and they could push 4v4 while someone's going to have to either be with Shen uh, to, to watch him or something like that. Because um, then they, they still have the ability to catch somebody, and they still have the ability to push down a lane with Nocturne being there, with the Death Sentence coming out as well with Ari and Graves. It'll be really hard to engage in on them. They have a lot of kiting potential to get back. So if Team Acme Gaming decides to want to try a 5v4 while Shen split pushes, I don't know if they'll be able to... Unless they catch somebody out entirely, I don't know if they'll be able to kill them fast enough. Because Thresh does have his box, Ari does have her Spirit Rush, Nocturne has that Paranoia, and with the Stand United coming in on top of that, and Graves, you know, with his dash and his barrier and everything, I feel like they won't necessarily uh, work that out. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have just around 40 seconds now before we get into the game. So just a little bit of time left to kill. No, uh, I guess I'll go update the stream title since apparently I forgot to do that. Typical classic buns for getting things. Oh, I forget so many things. Welcome to my life. <laughs> Running this tournament and dealing with like 200 and something people has just been driving me crazy. <laughs> I keep on asking so many people duplicate questions. Finally hopping into this game here, 2-1, and now we are going to hop into the loading screen here. So hopefully, go up here, we'll see the most important part of any game that you will ever watch, which is the skin battle. Which team has the better skins? And let's be honest here, no one really cares about gameplay and mechanics and oh, all that fun stuff. It only matters who has the flashiest skin that obviously makes them the better player. So we do see that pool party Renekton skin. And I must say, it looks pretty amazing, and I'm a little disappointed that Graves does not have his pool party skin as well. As uh, we see a couple skins getting popped out here, as we have Mafia, Graves, Yellow Jacket, Shen. And uh, up top, we have the Lee Shen and pool party Renekton, as well as Gladiator Draven being picked up. 
So one important thing that we can look at now that we get a little bit more serious and back to business is uh, you have to realize that Renekton does not have teleport. So he's going to rely on stopping Shen from teleporting, getting in there with his stun to make sure that Shen can't teleport instead of teleporting and following him. So it's going to be really important to see if uh, Arcades on Shen is able to get out of Renekton's view to ult into these fights and change the tide of these uh, skirmishes or fights and ganks later on in the game. So Renekton uh, is really going to have to be on his toes to make sure that Shen does not get out of his lane. And is going to really have to try to watch him to make sure that he's not able to sneak away and teleport into fights as he does not have the teleport to follow him. Yeah, so we're still waiting on Unwired to connect. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a pause at the start of the game as we let him catch up. Looks like he's had some trouble getting into game. So this is not the first time that we've streamed a match from Acme Gaming. Uh, we've streamed one of, I believe, their best of three match in the previous round, which was against um, the Thirst Crew. However, the Thirst Crew had to leave after the first game, so we didn't get to see the entire best of three. But Acme Gaming did win that game. And so now we see them going up against Team Zareph, which is the only team ranked seeded below seed 10 to make it to the third round of the winner's bracket. Uh, all seven other teams are uh, ranked in, or seeded 9 through 1, and Team Zareph is the 18th seed. It's the only team that was seeded on the lower half of the tournament to make it this far, without losing one, at least. So yeah, we probably are going to expect a pause at the start of this game as Unwired has still been unable to connect. And uh, that is uh, Unwired playing Janna, I believe, for this matchup. So Janna has not connected yet. We'll be waiting on that probably when we hop into the game here. Which is awesome because it gives me time to update the nameplates and such. Because, you know, it's typical Buns hasn't done it yet, yet, so all the time that he needs... <laughs> The software that I so we do hop have. into game here. No pause coming. Oh, there it is. The pause is finally finally coming out. It looks like Unwired does have that Forecaster Janna skin though, so they obviously won the skin matchup pretty hard as they have Forecaster Janna and Pool Party Renekton. As a Janna main, I was obligated to buy Forecaster Janna, and honestly, I gotta say it's not my favorite Janna skin. I definitely prefer Fro Frost Queen over it. Yeah, Frost is definitely a really nice skin. I really like that one. It looks it looks very clean. All the Frost ones, like the ice skins, I feel like they look really clean. Like you got uh, Glacial Malphite and or Glacial Ramus and the Malphite one as well. I feel like those all look really clean. I really, really like the as look well as of Ice Drake Shivana. Yeah, that one looks well as well. Looks like she reconnected now. I would expect the unpause to happen, and uh, you know they uh, hop right back into the game here. And then we'll get a little bit more serious. Is uh, five seconds until we hop back into game here. We'll see if the teams try any level one shenanigans here. We do see strictly wards getting picked up here from Unwired on Janna, though. So it looks like a lot of wards coming out there for Acme Gaming. And then on the opposite side, it looks like Thresh decides to go for the Rejuvenation Beat. So he does not have a lot of wards coming out. So I'd expect to see Acme Gaming ward up quite a bit early on or, or get a couple wards deep into the enemy's jungle or somewhere to potentially stop an invade or something like that. We do see, it looks like, coming down here, Nocturne's hanging around this bottom bush. Maybe they're going to go for a late red invade or they're just, looks like they're just watching the entrances, actually. Bring me more flesh bags to slice up. Alright, until spawn. All right, so we see both teams playing relatively passively in this level one, both just defending their jungle. Shen watching the entrance to top jungle, although Renekton's kind of starting to sneak around. And then the four members of Team Xerath guarding the bottom jungle, where it looks like Nocturne will probably be starting. We see Jan and Draven both defending uh, Lee Sin's bottom jungle, and it looks like they're just going to start moving towards doing the buffs in a few seconds, and nothing exciting will be going on. Yeah, it looks like uh, we actually do maybe see a little bit of a late invade, though. It looks like they spotted each other out, and they're just going to back off that. Unwired does drop a ward by their red buff here, and it looks like Nocturne's going to retreat and go to his blue. We do see Lee Sin starting on the blue buff, as well as Nocturne here. So that means Nocturne might gank top of the map a little bit earlier, while potentially we could see Lee Sin maybe hang around a little bit more in the bottom lane. 
Looks like we're not going to see any 2v1s this lane, or uh, this game, though, as uh, everybody heads to their respective lanes. Janna tried to steal it out with a tornado that we was not able to sneak that one away. So Janna does have tornado at level 1, so it'll be interesting to see how they use that. We do see Draven in the meantime pushing though, so we're going to expect him to hit level 2 quite a little bit quicker than uh, Graves here in the bottom lane. That can be pretty big. A level 2 Draven against a level 1 anything is really not a good spot for whoever's up against Draven. Draven's incredibly power powerful early on, especially if he gets that level advantage. It'll be interesting to see. I would expect, we see Asian Bliss in the mid lane in the meantime hit level 2 a little bit before Diana. I would I would imagine that R is uh, going to poke out Diana a little bit early on, but if Diana is able to last long enough, then uh, she'll be able to scale pretty easily. Meanwhile, in the top lane, we do see Shen, who's level 2 over Renekton, who just finally hit 2. So, uh, see how that lane matches up as, as well as uh, they're going to be probably trading back a little bit back and forth there. We do see Lee Sin coming into the mid lane here. Looks like he finished up that red. It looks like he's going to attempt to gank in here on R. He does decide to go in here. He's got half health. He does land the Q though. They go straight into there. Is looks like good job from R to trade a little bit of the damage back. No flash burn though by her. She's just going to back off of that one. Looks like Renekton is continuing to trade damage down onto Shen, and both of them are getting pretty low. But the damage is being traded relatively evenly. All right, so we do see Lee Sin coming around for a second ink attempt in this mid lane here. Looks like he misses the Q and he's just gonna back off. Meanwhile, in the top lane, Renekton is completely blind, and we do have Ben Yells on Nocturne coming in right behind him right now. Renekton's gonna be in a little bit of trouble. Creep Wave is pushing up, though. Renekton will be able to potentially slice and dice out of there. Looks like he's gonna walk right into Nocturne here. Nocturne is gonna pop up the fear onto that, and looks like he's just gonna give up and not pursue that one. A little surprising there. Alright, so it looks like Lee Sin's pinged that he's coming into bot lane, so he's going to try to come in through the lane. We'll see if he's able to get down much damage. Um, but Draven's has double axes spinning right now, so they have a huge amount of damage that can come out from this. Just, it's just a matter of Lee Sin managing to get into the fight before they get away, and it looks like they saw him coming and decided to back out. Yeah, dime shot there on Draven and unwired on Janna. Kind of gave that away a little bit. They started playing way too up above the wave. They were taking the creeps. It was kind of obvious that they were coming in there for that. So, uh, smart play there is uh, South Sproth and Valsaurus X just decided to back up off of that one. Meanwhile, we still see Lee Sin sitting in this mid lane. Um, he really wants this kill on Ari. They really want a lot of pressure going in here, but he's wasting a lot of his time here considering how unsuccessful it's been. And Ben Meanwhile, on the top around lane. behind Renekton. The top guys yeah. and goes in for an easy kill. Practically steals that from Shen, as all he does is land the Q to finish him off. Yeah, uh, good choice by them to push that lane up there. Renekton's gonna get a little bit behind with all the CS he's missing for that one there. Uh, Shen's already up 26 to 18. So good job there in the top lane by that king. He's uh, at least in 12 CS to 20 to Nocturne right now. And uh, has not been successful with this ganking. He's been spending a lot of time mid. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, we have 32 CS on Draven. To uh, 30 on, Dre, uh, on Graves, excuse me, so he's a little ahead of that one. But overall pretty even otherwise across the board. We do see Diana taking quite a bit of harass in the mid lane here. As uh, Ari's been able to poke her down and land a couple of charms and get her pretty low though. And it looks like she's going to back off and uh, go home. Back to base there. Not a whole lot of action going on across the map other than that besides just those couple of gank attempts here. As we see both teams pretty much just farming up right now. Not a whole lot of aggression coming out from the bot either side bot lane here is uh, they both seem content to just farm up at this point in the game. Yeah, so Ari's now going home and Diana just got back to lane. Ari got about 10 more creeps than Diana did. And it looks like she decided to buy a second door on Zering, whereas Diana bought the Elixir. So we'll have to see how that plays out. She also manages to get the Fiendish Codex. So Ari's definitely up a significant number of items going into this next lane. We'll have to see if she's able to turn that into a kill. Yeah, finishing that Fiendish uh, Codex is definitely going to help her out quite a bit in that mid lane. Um, it won't be a huge advantage, but it's still a small one nonetheless. So we'll see how well that works out for them. 
Danny does have quite a bit of sustain with that flash though. But uh, Ari has been poking her down significantly more. So it'll be interesting to see what happens now that they're sick though. If Diana is able to land a couple of her crescents, she can dash in there with her Lunar Rush and um, get a little bit more free harass out onto Ari. Both of them are six now, so I would expect to see a little bit more aggression coming out from one of them here potentially. Shen is also six in the top lane, so we do have that Stand United coming up now. So it's important to realize that as Team Zerif is going to have that global pressure on the map. Looks like blues are both being given to either mid laner as Ari picks up hers, and then Diana's being given hers by Lee Sin. So an even trade there with another jungler deciding to keep it for themselves. A lot of passive farming coming out here. Not a whole lot going on. Pass across the board. It looks like we do see Lee Sin heading to the bottom lane right now. That tri bush is pink for them, so they know that it's not warded. So he might potentially be able to make something happen. He does walk by a ward in the river, though, so they know he is coming. They are going straight for this, though. We'll see if they get it out. He misses the Q. Good play coming in by Tress. Here comes the Draven Ultimate as well. They do kick away, but the ult from Janna saves the both of them, and then she gets death sent into the turret. And Unwired has oh. run away from this one. It looks like the creeps do pick her up as Sathafrost does pick up that kill. That was a little, a little bit, bit of... unfortunate. Lee Sin missed his Q, and then his ultimate didn't knock back Graves as far as he would have hoped, because it, he hit him at an angle where he got knocked against the wall instead. And then Janna came in and tried to ult them back again, but did it a little bit too late and ended up knocking them to safety. The death sentence from Thresh was a great reaction that kept her locked in. She got, took a bunch of tower damage and almost survived using her shield that was picked up by the minions. It's a really close fight in the bottom that, with a few small changes, could have gone completely the opposite direction. Yes, definitely a good job there by Thresh. We do see Paranoia coming in on the Draven now. He's all by himself. He does flash the fear out though, and uh, he pops his barrier, so it looks like he's just gonna walk away from that one as well. So now Paranoia is down for Nocturne though, who's level seven. So that's gonna be down for a little bit. So it looks like uh, we see him rotating up to the mid lane at this point though. Let's see if they decide to go in onto the Lee Sin and onto the Diana here. Meanwhile, on the top lane, it looks like Renekton is starting to bully Shen out a little bit. Shen is still up in CS by quite a bit, though, but uh, is taking quite a bit of damage at this point. Looks like we see Nocturne coming up top to Renekton, who still doesn't have any wards down on the field. So we'll have to see how successful the gank this is. It looks like Nocturne's paranoia is on cooldown. Renekton goes pretty deep there on will half HP Shen. Is forced to flash away from the fear, but still has it land. Looks like Nocturne's just going to get down a little bit of damage and probably back off soon. It doesn't look like he's going for a kill. Yeah, looks like Renekton's just going to walk out of that one. He's pretty low. He's going to be forced to back off there. Looks like Lee Sin's probably going to start heading up there to try to hold that as Nocturne and Shen are going to push that one in. Well, in mid lane, uh, Diana gets taken down by that Ari, whose item advantage did end up resulting in a kill for her. If the double Dolan's and Phoenix Codex is giving you quite the start from the first back. Yeah, that was a good job by Asian Bliss there on Ari to be able to pick up that kill on Diana. It's important to note that Diana went back and bought a Negatron Cloak, so she's going to be building towards that Abyssal right now to hopefully outlast that burst and try to, you know, not have that happen again. But right now Asian Bliss is winning pretty hard in that lane, 97 CS to 76. She's getting the turret down to probably about a third here after she's done with those creep waves. Well, Diana is slowly uh, falling a little bit behind in that lane. Looks like CS all across the board here. It looks like um, Team Zerif is doing a really good job out uh, farming Acme Gaming overall. As uh, in the bottom lane as well, we see Graves with 86, Draven on 74. Top lane, 61 on Renekton, 72 on Shen. And, uh, and even in the jungle, Nocturne's only up by about 7, but it still leads all across the board. It's a 15.1k lead to 12.7 at this point in the game. So 
Master Zoo Nocturne clearing out the wards around Dragon. That could become a priority for both teams soon, as 12 minutes is a pretty standard time to start focusing on Dragon. And the vision advantage definitely goes to Team Zarek, who has it pinked. It doesn't look like Janna is holding anything. She completed a Sight Stone first and hasn't gotten a Phyla Stone or any pink wards. So currently, Acme Aiming is at a disadvantage when it comes to Dragon. Plus, uh, Team Zarek has the Shen that can hold down to Dragon. Like that breaks out around there. Yeah, we do see Shen bullying Renekton in the top lane a little bit now, too. Shen did finish up pieces for his Sunfire. There is, he's got a Chain Vest and a Giant Spelt as well. While Renekton on the other side just has a Giant Spelt right now. And is getting bullied out of lane a little bit by Shen at this point. See Diana try to go in on Ari, but Nocturne joins the fight. It looks like they're going to be able to take her down. Nuz, it's a good, Diana good getting job a little bit brave. It looks like they're going down to take the dragon there. I'm, I'm actually a little surprised they decided not to take the mid turret there. Maybe they decided they wanted to leave Ari up so Ari can continue farming, and they're actually not even going to go for dragon. They're going to go for blue buff. That's a little surprising considering they just killed Diana on the other team there, and they're not going to try to push their advantage in and take that dragon considering they do have Shen stand united in the top, so it would be a 5v3 for that dragon. Shen's had a pretty strong advantage in top now, and it looks like they might have wanted to keep him up there so that he could do this, and he starts to dive in on Renekton now and gets the kill top lane and will now be able to push down quite a bit of damage on top turrets. They might not have wanted to do something that would involve pulling Shen out of top lanes with such strong damage. Yeah, Shen's continuing to push the turret there. I would have actually liked to see... It would have, it would have been really cool to see him back immediately and then head straight to the dragon while Renekton's dead and can't really push against him. Uh, if he would have done that, that would have been another... If he wouldn't have had a waste to stand united and could have just walked down there and they could have taken the dragon as well. Um, I'm a little surprised that uh, they did not try to take the dragon there after getting a couple advantages across the map. They just decided to go for the blue buff and settle for that. So they're playing safe, but still definitely growing the lead as they're up to 4,000 gold now at just the 13 minute mark. You see Draven actually using his ultimate in the bottom lane as he decides to use that whirling death. They do stop Thresh backing as well, so they just decide to poke him and stop them from backing a little bit. It looks like they maybe want to stay you now. As though they're checking all the bushes here, they are completely blind in this bottom lane. Looks like Draven's headed home now to pick up some more wards. They've been Graves alone, or Draven alone at night. Yeah, Thresh, just Bowser X is going to go straight in here. It looks like he's going to probably try to land the distance or not. He's not going to throw that out at all. And they're actually just going to back off of that. A little surprising there. Maybe they didn't realize that Janet had backed. Meanwhile, we do see Ari in the mid lane slowly poking out Diana here once again, and is uh, she's slowly using her advantage. She does have that Deathfire Grass finished up at this point too, so she is extremely, extremely strong. Um, I'm really surprised they haven't taken Dragon yet. They do come in here, they do catch out Janna warding though, so probably upon finishing Unwired here, she does cast her ultimate there, just kind of as like, you know, style points. Do finish her off there, they are going to finally start onto this Dragon. A little surprised it didn't happen sooner, but they are finally taking it at this point. So Leeson has now just discovered for his team that the dragon is gone. I'm sure they're suspicious of it. And it looks like they might go in on this Diana if she stays brave again, as her Nocturne is sitting in the bush and does have his ultimate up. The charm lands on Lee Sin and Nocturne drops the spear on it. Looks like they're going to try to go in on this. Uh, their tower is pretty low, but they're getting quite a bit of damage out on the Nocturne. And Ignite was dropped on him. Yeah, Lee Sin's too low, and Ari's going to dash right in here. This can probably be a double kill come out. Actually, yeah, here comes Asian Bliss in here. He's able to finish that out. Looks like the turret might be able to finish her off here one more shot, and they don't get it. And looks like they're going to push in here and take this turret. So that's the first tower going of the game going down to Tuber. Going down in favor of Team Zareth. 
who's also up 8 kills to 0 and has 1 dragon. So this is, game's looking very one-sided in their favor. Yeah, they're slowly really pushing that advantage. Great job by Asian Bliss. Um, he's really, really uh, dominating his mid lane right now over Diana. Good job by Shen as well to come in with that Sand United. They were able to push that down and get a free turret as well. I would imagine Shen would take this top turret now any second. As uh, Renekton is actually not up there. Lee Sin's going to hold that. We actually see Renekton heading down into the bottom lane here. As they're going to potentially go in here onto Thresh. And uh, here they go straight in. Renekton flashes in. Goes straight in onto Graves. And is going to keep chasing in onto him. It looks like he's not close enough to do enough damage at this point though. Looks like he's going to go in. His dice slice and dice is going to be up in about five seconds. His stun's going to be up in about one. He's going to get that down. Barriers popped by Graves and he is going to finally drop down. We do have Nocturne waiting off here in the bush. Renekton is still extremely fed. Flash burn by Janna there. Looks Ari, like Ari is, is coming in from the mid lane though. So Renekton and Draven is staying on the turret. He's not coming into this fight. So Renekton and Janna could be in a bit of trouble now. Yeah, we do see Renekton finally going in there, but uh, it looks like Ari is just going to pick up the double kill. And uh, Draven's going to try to run away. The charm's going to be coming up in a second. Flash burn by Nocturne, actually. They're actually going to go straight in and dive Draven there. He's going to try to turn it around and get some damage out onto Nocturne, but it's not going to be enough. As uh, Ari is now 7 0 and 1 and is extremely fed. So what sort of moves do you think that Acme Gaming needs to be making in order to come back from this? It's looking very one-sided with 7k gold lead for Team Zara. Uh, obviously they need to be killing Ari. How do you think they should go about doing that? Um, at this point I'm not sure that they can entirely. They really need to catch her out and uh, time it pretty perfectly. Um, I really want to see Diana be able to get in there and uh, she really needs to use that Moonfall to be able to pull Ari back in and maybe cancel one of her ultimates out and then Renekton would have to be there as well to get a stun and uh, they just need the sheer amount of damage to really surprise her and catch her out or catch her out after she uses her Spirit Rush. Huge leads coming out right now, up to about 8k as that Team Zeref is slowly just using their advantage here. As, uh, they're pretty much winning every lane at this point in CS and in kills. And a good example of that is in the top lane as Shen has been taking an entire wave of creeps as he duels Renekton at the same time. Ari is just an absolute monster right now at 7-0-1. Oh, like she's building towards a death cap right now after she got her death fire grass. And she just does so much damage right now. I really want to see Team Zeref group up and really uh, try to take another objective here, maybe like the inner turret somewhere together. We do actually see them going in on Ari here. She is actually going to get caught out. It looks like the ultimate is going to come in from Shen standing United. Ari dashes right out of that. She's going to be able to get right out and she turns around, does a ton of damage and goes legendary. Renekton's really low right now. He's going to get dropped down as well. Looks like Moon's... Looks like Nusha's going to try to get away on Diana. Barely gets away. Great. Death Hands coming out there from Fresh and Taunt comes out as well. It looks like Lee Sin is going to get dropped as well. So I think that's a perfect example of why I felt they couldn't kill Ari. They tried to there, they had a lot of damage come out on her, but the Stand United came in from Shen and they just weren't able to do it. And uh, we actually have a surrender coming out here as uh, Acme Gaming decides to just end this one early and go straight into a game soon. So that last fight couldn't have started any better for Acme Gaming. They got a lot of CC down on the super fed Ari, but the Shen ultimate and the Nocturne ultimate coming in to protect her really